Hello and welcome to a new video about control engineering. This time we are going to talk about a standard element, our first standard element. We're talking about, we're starting simple. Okay, we're talking about the proportional element. Proportional element or P element, what this is, how it looks like, what is the transfer function, an example of it, I will explain during this video. Okay? So Let's start. So we're talking about a proportional element. Proportional element. Or short, P element. I will give an example what a P element might be. A P element. Let's imagine we have some sort of, of valve. So there is a valve, two positions, one is closed, one is open. This valve, one, two, this valve is a proportional valve, and that's basically it. So there is a certain flow through this valve flow, depending on the time, time-dependent flow, uh, in liter per second. And we are moving this valve, uh, so there is a certain opening uh, at a time in millimeters. Proportional valve, certain opening, resulting a flow. Uh, and we know that if the opening A is zero millimeters, the flow is zero liters per second. That's clear. And if the opening A is five millimeters, the flow it shall be 15 liters per second. And in between it is linear. So this is a linear characteristic proportional valve. Proportional flow valve. We can adjust with the movement of the of the valve we can adjust the flow through the valve how are those two now connected to each other well there is the current flow at a certain time yeah, is the opening at exactly this time multiplied by a proportional factor k okay in our case here, this proportional factor would be yeah, 15 liters per second divided by 5 millimeters are 3 liters per second and millimeter. Okay? This would be the proportional factor here, 3. 3. Now let's imagine we do have a transfer element. We have this proportional element. There is it. This is our P element. And as we had it before, we have an input value to this P element. And we have an output value of at this element, this transfer element. So there is a certain Xi from T. And there is an XO from T, which is the result from XI from T. And I said, this is a proportional element. And the output, we can imagine the output is the flow through the element. Yeah, so that's XO from T. Yeah. And the input is the displacement, yeah, the moving. Yeah, that's XI from T. Xi resulting in a certain Xo. Yeah. This means yeah, if I just transfer this to Xo and Xi's, Xo from T equals K multiplied by Xi from T. This is the transfer function of a proportional element yeah. in time space. Now let's move to the Laplace area. Yeah. 
So let's simply cope, oh, translate this into the Laplace area fro from what does it matter? What is it happening? Yeah? This xi from i, xi from t will get xi from s. Yeah? This xo from t will get xo from s. Yeah? And this proportional element will get a transfer function g. Okay, this is the transfer function g, and I want to know what the transfer function is. So let's bring this to the to the Laplace area. Xo from t is going to get xo from s. Yeah? Xi is going to get xi from s. Yeah? And the proportional a factor will stay a factor k. Okay. Taking into account that the output is the input multiplied by the transfer function, this must be the transfer function. Okay, so this is g from s of a proportional element. This means a proportional element g from s equals k. Not too complicated, right? I promised. I promised it will not be too complicated. Let's have a look at this transfer function in the Bode plot. Ah, in the Bode plot. In the imaginary, the, the imaginary space. Yeah? So there's the imaginary axis. There's the real axis. How does k look like? Well, it's a point at the real axis. Here we have k. Okay. So if I want to draw it as number, as imaginary number, it will look like this up to k just on the real axis and I made up some blue markings. Now it's unique. <laughs> some blue markings. Okay, so let's think about what it means uh, for, for the frequency response. We said f formally we can just exchange this s with j omega. This means a g from j omega is also k. Okay? There is no s to, ex to exchange, so it will remain k. What does it mean for the absolute value from j omega? Well, this would be the absolute value of k, yeah? which is actually k. Okay? What does it mean for the argument? Since this is a real number, this is always zero. Now let's have a brief look what to the extremes. Let's say frequency is zero. What is the this amount? It will stay k. Yeah. Let's say the frequency is very high, infinite, yeah? the absolute value of infinite, since it will is k, it will also be k. Huh? And let's have a look at the argument. The argument from g j0 is 0 degree and the argument from g j unlimited is also 0 degree. Huh? This is how this looks like. Proportional element, transfer function of the proportional element. Let's have a look at the step response at the Bode plot. Okay. Let's have a look. So we are talking about the p element. P element. And we said the transfer function g from s is k yeah? and we said the 
frequency response is also k. Okay. This means the absolute value is k and the argument is your degree. Okay. First, let's have a look at the step response. We are jumping, the input is changing from 0 to 1. Okay, from 0 to 1. Let's stay at this example. Our k is 3 in this case. We said k is 3. Yeah. So, if the input is 0, 0 multiplied by 3 is 0. Then the input is changing to 1, 1 multiplied by 3 is 3, we will jump to 3. Yeah. And this will remain constant all as long as the input remains constant, this will remain constant. So we are here at k. In our example it's 3. Okay. This is the step response of a proportional element. As soon as the input is changing, the output is changing as well. Here you see already, it's, you know, the, the standard elements, they are somehow idolized. Yeah? So it's not like they exist in the real world. There's nothing in the real world where the output is immediately at the same point in time as the input appears. It will always be a little bit later. Yeah? However, we have to live with this yeah? because they are really easy. Yeah, to, to work with, once you understand the standard element, you can use the standard elements and yeah, live with the live that the that the reality is too complex to, to be fit to standard element. Step response. Yeah. How is the frequency response looking like? Well, the absolute value is always k. K is 3. So I only have to see the three line, one, two, three, it's here. Yeah. Regardless of the frequency, it will remain three constant at k. Okay. And the argument is also rather easy. The argument will always remain zero regardless of the frequency. This means there is no latency. Zero. Proportional element. Okay. This is the math and this is the Bode plot. Okay. Proportional element is one of three I'll call it them pure elements. Okay? One of three pure elements. The next pure element is an integrational element. We'll talk about then. And then there's also a differential element. This is the next two videos. Yeah? So there are only three pure elements. And the rest of the elements is a clever combination of, of those base elements. Okay? I will explain. So, proportional element, first base element, next time integration element, for this time. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.